Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the second part of my M1000R review. I did a review a first ride of this bike a couple of weeks ago. I'll pop a link at the top there. But this is my second part of the review where I talk about how I found this bike after sort of t having it in my possession for two weeks and sort of riding it around as if it was my own. The good news is I'm still alive. I haven't died. I haven't been thrown straight into prison. There could be a nasty little surprise awaiting to come through the post, I suppose. <laughs> but I think, I think I'm all clear. Providing I can get this back to BMW today, I think I've got away with it. I think I've got away with it scot-free because this motorcycle is just a wee bit crazy. So if you're interested in this bike, join me for my final little sum up of this machine and I'll let you know what I thought of this machine during the two weeks I've been riding it around and enjoying it. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a giant sausage and I'll see you after the intro. Dropsy, roll it. So, as you can see, in my first video I had the little Pro Race bean tin on it, didn't I? And it sounded wonderful. I've now got the original can back on, the, the, the Road Legal Akwapovich, which comes with this bike. Doesn't sound too much different. As I said to you before, these don't. I think you could run this with no ANCAN on it at all, and it wouldn't sound too ridiculous because there's a million different catalytic converters in that bottom section of the exhaust there. So I've got standard CAN back on. She's now going back to BMW. So you're going to be joining me now as I do my final ride on this bike, and we'll head back to BMW UK. We'll drop this off, and I'll let you know what I think to it because I've really, really enjoyed having this machine and, and one of the things i wanted to learn you know during my two weeks of, of running this bike was whether i could settle down on it you know the performance of this machine is not in question this is the most aggressive naked motorcycle i've ever ridden maybe the most aggressive motorcycle i've ever ridden full stop it's it's crazy and what i've done in some of the comments from the other video People said, put it in the pro race mode, turn the wheelie control down, make it, give it the one-to-one -one throttle mapping. So I've been through all of the options and I've now set this up with minimal wheelie control, one-to-one -one throttle mapping. And uh, just to, if it wasn't crazy enough, I've made it more crazy. I've made it more crazy. So uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get away with this one last ride because this, this, you know, just riding here, which is the bat and ball pub. Apparently this is the home of cricket. This is where cricket was invented right here. So if you're a big cricket fan, bat and ball pub, the original cricket field where cricket was invented. So they say, don't know how true that is, but uh, if you're to believe what it says inside the pub, this is where cricket was invented. So anyway, never mind about cricket. You don't want to know about cricket. You want to know about insane motorcycles. So let's jump on. <laughs> Right, let's do it. So the M1000R is BMW's first M naked motorcycle. You know, and I hope you've watched my first ride review because I'm not going to cover the same things I covered in that first video. So if you haven't seen it, it's worth clicking the link. Watching that one first because that's, this, this review is going to carry on really where that one left left off and at the end of that video I said can I survive can I ride this bike normally and actually you know after riding it a few times I've been out to sort of long rides on this you know with other people and I've settled down because one thing which is fantastic on this bike is the fact that it's a straight four so it's so smooth so easy to ride at lower revs and because BMW have got all the cruise control I think this is the best cruise control system on the BMW system is the best non-adaptive cruise control system on any bike. It's really easy to use, makes it absolutely so easy to, to settle yourself down. And because the riding position on this bike is very aggressive, really wide bars, you know, a fair amount of weight on your wrist, you actually need that cruise control on this bike. And it's so easy, it's like single press, it's on, you know. So that helped me calm down, helped me go a bit slower, 
helped me get used to this aggressive position, which I love. I love the riding position on this bike. The quick shifter and blipper on this machine is the best you've ever I've ever tried you know that, that this engine with the BMW quick shifter blipper or shift assist or whatever they call it is absolutely superb on this on this engine and it's the same as it is on the S1000 RR up and down through the box is super crisp you know it's absolutely incredible the quick shifter blipper and that sort of again that helps you to go a little bit slower you know, when you can just change easily on the blipper up and down at really low revs, really low throttle inputs. Perfect. So, so my conclusion is, yes, I can calm myself down. I can just ride this bike normally. <laughs> oh dear, I've got the wheelie control turned down. And as you saw then, the first gear it just pulls the wheel up instantly. Even though this is a straight four, and I said this in the in the first part of my, my my first ride, there's so much initial pull on this engine for a straight four. It's really quite incredible. I know they've put a larger rear sprocket on, so they've downgeared the bike compared to the S1000R, but that's made a massive difference to how much pull there is on this machine. You know, it's. It's almost sort of V4 roll-on sort of power levels now. It's not got the same initial punch as the Super Duke, because the Super Duke's power delivery is all just instantly there. This is a little bit more, you know, mid-range. It's not got as much on the throttle on that initial turn that you do on the Super Duke. But it is just so punchy for a straight four. It's unbelievable how much punch it has and how much pull it has. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, it's quite hard to, to ride this bike sensibly because of the way that power comes in. The other reason it's quite hard to ride this bike sensibly, you know, the suspension is rock hard on this bike. Absolutely rock hard. It's got stiffer springs in the shock and in the forks, and it is really aggressive. And, you can, and I've got it in the race pro mode, which you can go into and customise everything and I can then customise where I want my suspension and I've got it sort of middle of the road in the race pro mode it's not as hard as it can go but it's really aggressive you know if, if feeling every bump it will jar you but it also gives you fantastic feedback from the road and encourages you to open that throttle and push on and then the brakes on this bike are the best brakes I've ever tested they may not be Brembo's, they may be made by Nissan, but these BMW M brakes are absolutely incredible. I've got nothing behind me. The stopping power on these brakes is unbelievable. I don't know if it's because of the pad material they're using. Maybe they're using a really soft pad that will wear really quickly, but it just gives you incredible braking performance. And again, if you've got amazing brakes and an incredible handling bike, that makes you push on and go a little bit faster than you should. I can completely configure the race pro modes. There's four race pro modes on this bike, which you can go into and configure. So you could have, you could bin off all of the standard modes, because you can only have four modes to cycle through. So you have to turn off like the rain mode or the road mode or the race mode if you want to enable these customizable race pro modes. But I think if this was mine, I'd have each of those race pro modes configured how I wanted it, you know, one with wheelie control off, another with soft suspension and full wheelie control, you know, and have it like a make your own comfort, make your own comfort road and sport settings which suit your desires exactly. So it's fully customizable the electronics with those race pro modes and not just for the track and also in the race pro mode when I go up and down the DCT buttons here. I can on the fly adjust how much traction control I want. So I've got full control via a button to adjust my traction as well. And you only get that in the race pro mode. Can't get that in the normal road mode. So that is the way I would have this bike if it were mine. Because it's a straight four, even the fuel consumption is pretty reasonable on this bike. I mean, I've been riding it really aggressively and according to the dashboard, I'm getting sort of 36 miles per gallon and that's ridden sort of hard. So because it's a straight four, it's not ridiculous on fuel. It's not like V4 fuel levels. <laughs> it's even semi-sensible. There's so 
much power on this one. I mean, it's 217, sorry, 207 horsepower. I'm getting carried away. It's 207 horsepower, this bike. That is a ridiculous amount of power for a naked bike. I mean, when, when it winds up, it is, you know, the front's hovering off the floor. It's ridiculously fast, this bike. Absolutely insanely fast. You know, if this was on an S1000 double R, where you're in that sort of sports bike tuck, it's fast. On a naked, it feels even faster. And I think if it had a completely upright position, you know, you'd literally struggle to hold on. But because you're cantered forward, you're down over the front, you're sort of ready for that. And just that overtaking power alone is incredible. And then that mid-range can even take you by surprise sometimes. On a bumpy back lane like this, that suspension is so firm, I can feel literally every bump in the tarmac. It is unbelievable. The bike comes with a steering damper, and I think that's needed because it does get sort of a little bit flighty. And another thing I like about this position is you can ride it like a sports bike. Of course, you've got weight on the wrists. You can hang off it as if it's a sports bike. <laughs> you know, it's, it's an aggressive naked position. But that means you can ride it like a sports bike. And I love that. I love moving around in the seat, hanging my legs off. Now, that, I really love that way of riding. And if you're riding a very upright naked, there's no real need to sort of move around on the seat like that. You can, it really makes a difference on this bike. That riding position is absolutely spot on for me. It won't be for everybody because there's a fair bit of weight on your wrist and you actually do need the cruise control. There's not many naked bikes where you actually need the cruise control. This is one of them just to relieve that little bit of weight on your wrist when you're going through towns and stuff. It's not too, it's not like a sports bike, but you do have a bit there. I think it's a good compromise between the two. I'm not sure it's worthwhile buying a sports bike now. I'm not sure I'd buy an S1000 double R now. Because I think this does everything that the S1000 double R does on the road. Obviously on track, yeah, on the, you know, on the main straights and stuff, there's no fairing, so. You know, you're not going to get the same top speeds on this that you can on the double R. But I still think this would be incredible on track because of the way the riding position works and the power delivery. It'll be a brilliant track bike, this. And as a road bike, yeah, it may be bonkers, bonkers fast. But because you've got no fairing, you're limited on your top speed anyway. You know, you, you don't go into three figures for very long. And then you're, you know, you're slowing down again because it's too uncomfortable to go three figures on the naked. So it makes a bit of sense. I'm not saying a lot of sense, but a bit of sense. It makes more sense than perhaps the S1000 double R on the road. You've got the same power, the same pull through the gears, actually quicker because you've got that bigger rear sprocket, but you're limiting yourself on the top speed. You're limiting your chances of going to jail <laughs> because it's a naked. You can't go to mental flat out. But I ride this exactly like I would a sports bike. Exactly the same way. Oh, and I love it for that. It's just on the power in first gear. Oh, I love that setup. That was one thing which sort of put me off with it a bit, you know. It didn't seem to wheelie very much, and I, I like a bike which the wheel comes up on. You know, you go over a crest, you could crack the throttle, and the wheel comes up. I like that on a naked. This now does that with that throttle mapping and the wheelie control turned down. You know, that's what I love about the Super Duke. And this now does that. Yeah, th this bike is very, very good. I mean, I know I said I can go slowly on it. I'm not proving my point. <laughs> very well in this video, am I? 
but not on this road. This road's too good to waste pottering along. This is a road to showcase the bike, if ever there was one. And even though when I jumped on this, the suspension felt firm and hard, as soon as you're pushing on, that suspension, it just all clicks. It just all comes together. Ah, yeah, this is, this is a fantastic bike. If you're a hooligan, if you're looking at a Tuona, you're looking at a Super Duke, look at the M. And I even think this now is £19,500. I think that is reasonable money when you consider like the, you know, the Super Duke Evo, what was that, 18 and a half, nearly 19? The Street Fighter V4, even the base ones into like 21s, the S is like 24 now. So a 19 and a half, an M bike, I think that is reasonable. And it's got the forged wheels, all of the extras like the M levers. And as I mentioned in the other video, if you're specking up a standard machine, a standard S1000R, the price would be much higher by the time you've added the forged wheels and the M levers and whatnot. So this is good value. When it's coming to something, when you say a 19 and a half pound bike is good value, isn't it? That is the age we live in, unfortunately. This is one of the only bikes that I know of, this and the S1000RR, which is full wideband. It's got about three Lambda sensors in it, and it's full wideband, this bike. That means, basically, the bike is monitoring the air-fuel ratio throughout the entire rev range. Normally you get you hear of closed loop and narrow band lambda sensors. That's that all bikes have that these days because that's monitoring for the first third of throttle to basically for emissions to make sure it's kept lean in that first third of throttle to meet the Euro regulations. And that's what that's for. This has got full wide band. So what that means is you can change the whole system on this. As long as you put a system on which retains the lambda screw-ins and the bike will adjust the fueling automatically for the extra airflow. So it's full lambda and I love that. Of course, it will adjust the fueling settings within the ranges which BMW have programmed to meet, you know, what they consider safety ranges and emission ranges. So having this flashed would obviously fix that. But having it flashed, some of the flashes out there keep the lambda the full wideband so you know it will still look at the inputs from those sensors to decide what fueling to run so that means you know if you're up, up a mountain if you're at sea level you know that the pressure changes are automatically adjusted so that's great that's really clever stuff and i don't know any other motorcycle you could buy which is full wideband like that oh those tires are skipping around <laughs> hey fronts up so what are the bad points you know it's clear that i really like this bike i love it but there, it's not perfect there's always some niggles on any bike the niggles on this one it's a little bit buzzy in the bars and i said this about the s1000r after a while in the saddle i get a little bit of tingling in my hands i can live with it but it's there and more so than some other straight fours and i think the fact that the bars are widened it's perhaps a little bit worse than the S1000R and the fact that it's got the, the, the it's revving harder because of the gearing change on the motorway it's also a little bit worse so that's one niggle the other slight niggle is the clutch can be a little bit grabby as you let it out it like pulses a little bit on the clutch as you let the clutch out but they, that doesn't matter too much because you only ever need the clutch to pull away and it's just a case of getting used to it but it's a little bit like pulsy and grabby on the clutch um, oh, is there anything else I think could be improved I think that is it it's sometimes a little bit tricky to find neutral you may have to try a couple of times to hit neutral it's not too bad again I'm, I'm being exceptionally picky here but sometimes it can take a little while to find neutral that could be because this bike has only got 600 miles on it you know it's it's, it's very low mileage this but they're the only bad points I can really come up with with this bike it's brilliant and i know everyone's saying i'll get a lot of comments on the video saying yeah i'm taking your reviews with a, with a pinch of salt now chopsy because you dislike everything you ride which is true that's because i only ride bikes i think i'm gonna like 
and there's really no bad bikes these days. There's no bike you ride and go, this is absolutely terrible. There just isn't. There's only ever niggles to pick up on. And that's the niggles with this machine. So for those of you which think I'm being paid off by the manufacturers to say good things, you, you could not be more wrong. I only ride bikes I like. This is a hobby for me, this YouTube thing. This isn't my full-time job. This is a hobby. So why would I ride stuff I'm not really interested in? It makes no sense. So I only ride stuff I really want to ride and test. But if that's something which is new out, which interests me, so the chances are I'm going to like it because I'm borrowing the sorts of bikes that I want to ride. God, this thing is so, so fast. But there we are, the M1000R. An absolutely amazing motorcycle. If you like the S, you're going to love the M. If you've got an S, should you upgrade? Mm, it is better. It is better, but it's more aggressive. So, you know, it depends if you like an aggressive motorcycle. If you don't, the SR could be a bit of fix because it's a bit more relaxed than this. This is certainly as mad as a hatter. There we go, guys. I will be back with Greg later on in the year doing a comparison with this bike. I think it's going to be with the Street Fighter V4S. We're going to compare this to the Street Fighter, the 2023 Street Fighter, to see which one we prefer. We may even throw in a Tuono, maybe throw in an MT10 SP as well. We'll see what we can sort out, but there will be definitely be a comparison with this machine at some point this year. So if you like the sound of that, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers guys.